Hi, and welcome to episode 130 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today we are going to be talking about hearth and kitchen witchery and a little bit of like mixed in there with some deities at the end. Yeah, we thought we were going to do it all about deities, but then we're like, we really haven't, we've done some kitchen witchery, but we really haven't done a deep dive into it. No, and like, we've talked a little bit about like what I like to do versus, mm -hmm. but nothing in like detail. (laughs) Did you see that Greg said that you're inspiring him to do kitchen witchery? (gasps) I didn't read that part. I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, we've gotten a couple of emails from y'all and we have not addressed them yet. And, um. Part of it was like, I got an email and I was like, okay, I, I don't have time. So I was like, River, can you please? Yes. I so we're helping each that. other out. We're both super, super, super busy. Oh but yeah, goodness. he said you are inspiring him to do kitchen witchery. So hopefully oh, this episode will help him out with this. That's so exciting. I was just thinking like, I haven't had time to do any. Well, speaking stuff. of that. How have you been? I know that for yeah, a long it's... time, our listeners have gone through your journey through college and graduating and not being able to find a job. And now you're working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just now you look like, back it's... on those days and you're like, I wish I was back in the time when I wasn't working, I even though I you were stressed unemployed. out. Right? I'm stressed out now. Uh, I'm still stressed out. And it's not even like, um, oh, I have financial freedom now. Like, it's not like that either. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I needed a job. I got a job and it's, I'm still having to pay off some debt. I'm still having to, I have a car Mm -hmm. payment. I have all of this. And then I have rent and uh, I saw, that's all I can say. Um, I am at least you're out there now though. Yeah. 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 Cause you were super stressed when you had no income coming in. I was more relaxed though. Cause I got to play video games all day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> except for when you went to try to go to sleep at night and then you couldn't sleep and then I couldn't sleep came. because I was thinking I was like oh shit I have to pay for all of this stuff I have to pay for yeah. all of that stuff I have and all I did was play video games yeah, all day today. and I could have like done something all day well but no. you all were door dashing and he's <laughs> yeah going we to were we, and... we did do a bit of door dashing to pay off a lot of what we did have and I mean, that's. We, I mean, we, I we think need to work with what we had. I think door dashing is pretty cool because it's something that you can just say, you know what, I need a hundred bucks this week, and you go in your door dash. Yeah, but it takes all week to make it. I well, mean, it does. Give or take, if you're dedicated, and it helped because we had two people, so we had two apps running at the same time, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's not get into yeah. that because that's stressing me out. <laughs> but um, no, I haven't had much time to do anything that I really like to do now. I said I was playing video games, but while I was playing video games, while I was unemployed, I was also cooking and doing things that I wanted Mm -hmm. to do and, Mm -hmm. you know, cleaning, cleaning, spending time with my little little fur babies, you know, being at home. I'm a homebody. And so it's really stressing me out to be away from home, especially since I was home for such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I had really gotten used to it. And now my house is actually, it's not a mess today. I've been starting to work on my routine of when I need to clean and I'm trying to do dishes every night before I go to bed so and then put them away in the morning while I'm getting ready so that yeah, I have some balance and my house isn't a mess and that's the thing about going into the workforce for the first time you you it takes you a minute to yes. get your schedule down but once you do it's doable mm-hmm. and eventually you're going to have kids and all that will be doable too. It seems, you know, it just that sounds takes, like an awful thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a minute to get used to the working world and you're in it now. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm starting to pick up a routine of cleaning. So my house isn't an entire mess right now. Which I know makes you feel better. It does. It makes me feel a lot better. Mm-hmm. I'm still getting like, I call it probably has to do with some sort of like anxiety or OCD or whatever it is. But um, I get that I call it an itch in my brain. Okay. If I think about something that I want to do, like right now, my bathroom is painted, the ceiling is orange. I love it, but I'm starting mm-hmm. to get tired of it. It's my house is so small. You know, I live in a small apartment mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. everything right now, with me being gone all the time, to me not having time to clean, et cetera, has been weighing on me. So anything that doesn't 
seem spotless to me is weighing heavy. So like even the orange in my bathroom is driving me crazy because I'm like, yeah. it doesn't look clean, even though it, it is clean. It just the color is it's not spring. It's fall. It's yeah, it's something it, in my head. You're going to be one of those that wants to <laughs> decorate for every season, which there's Probably. nothing wrong with that. And then the, you would feel good because, oh, it's springtime and now everything yeah. is yellow or whatever yeah. color. And So I get these yeah. itches in my brain. I call them my itch. itch. Mm -hmm. My husband now understands me. Before we used to have some heavy discussions about, no, you don't need to paint the bathroom every single season. Okay. Yes, I, I understand. I, the, it, it just gets in my head and it takes a lot to get it out if I don't do that thing. And so mm -hmm. one of the itches is my bathroom, which I can't address right now. And mm -hmm. then the other itch is I have this beautiful mirror on my balcony, which makes our little balcony seem bigger because it's mounted I on the wall. I love it. Y'all, I've been over there. I love it. It was yellow. The frame oh, yeah. it was yellow. It's not yellow anymore because last night at 10 p.m. I decided <laughs> to paint it. <laughs> What color is it now, pray tell? See, now I love color theory. Uh, <laughs> and so I have a lot of artists. paint. I have yes. a lot of paint. And um, I mixed together all the paints that I had to make a color. I was like, okay, so if I had this color, it started out as yellow. And then I added some, what did I add? I think I had some gray. And I added a lot of like this deep, rich red that I have. Oh, and so, so it kind of an orange. Out it, it, it's not orange. So I was thinking it was going to be orange, but because of the gray and I had a little bit of white, so I poured a, a, a lot of white. So I had, I poured a lot of white in there. And so now it's sort of like a salmon pink. Really? And I'm not sure I, it's painted. I'm not sure it's the color though. Cause I, you know, I also have this thing where if it's not exactly it, it has a feeling that needs to mm -hmm. feel right. And this color mm -hmm. doesn't feel right. Now it's a lovely color and I made it myself. Now you'll never be able to make this color ever again. Like this mixture is very random from all the paints that I have in my cabinet. I will never yeah. be able to make it the same ever again. Ever and again. Yeah. It just doesn't feel right for the balcony. Now I'm, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, but that's an issue in my brain. And this is mm -hmm. all a part of hearth and kitchen witchery. Now it is a part of the home and this is how I it, take 100%. it. 100%. Yes. So my bathroom is making my brain itch. My mirror on my balcony is making my brain itch. And <laughs> where we put our shoes is making my brain itch. So right now we have a little open rack. You can, it, our shoes are exposed. You can see it. Like our, and but some, it can You have mess. no room to we do much. But I need, <laughs> my oh husband boy. says I don't need. And oh boy. I, I almost made an impulse buy today of, with money that I don't have currently <laughs> of $140. <laughs> wow. Or a shoe cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz then you can close the doors and you don't you can see close them. It and you don't see it and I can decorate the top and it'll be in our entryway and then that would mm -hmm. take away the rack that we have with our shoes on it right now. Like but I want to keep that rack. It won't be a shoe rack anymore, but where the heck am I going to put it? I don't know. We have no space. So I'm like it can stay a shoe rack right now because when we move out finally and have a bigger house, I'll be able to put it somewhere really nice. Yeah. <sighs> I have a bunch of itches in my brain right now. <laughs> wow, I really opened up a can of worms when I yes, asked you, you how you'd been doing. <laughs> actually, you have. And I feel like I haven't talked about it in a while. Yeah, but, I don't think uh, you have. So, no. yeah. But everything is fine. <laughs> Everything I'm just glad fire, that fire, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Well, let's Anyways, talk about our sorry. drink today. Yeah, what are we drinking? Like we haven't even gotten into the good part. What are we drinking? So I, we thought we would try our drink of the month for tonight's episode. And y'all just got our uh, newsletter. If you're a patron, it's posted on the Patreon. If you have subscribed through email on our website. You, you've got it through email. Otherwise, it is on our website under newsletters. You can go and look at it. It's about six pages. And one of the pages is, of course, our drink of the month. Mm -hmm. And that is it is called the Dance of the Dandelions. Mm -hmm. And it is champagne. And you know how you do like mimosas with champagne and orange juice or champagne and cranberry juice. Well, this is champagne and dandelion syrup. Oh, which is so fun. And it is, I've not been able to make enough 
I, I had like three dandelions in my yard. We had a lot here. We My really my did. husband, I've made him not mow the lawn and it's driving him crazy because it's full <laughs> of weeds, just not dandelions. Yeah. And he he's like, it looks like a mess. I'm like, I know, but the little bees are still hibernating under there. They're just now starting to come out. Can you wait another week? And he's been very good at waiting so before he mows down all the weeds yeah. because they're the pollinators and the feeders of all the yeah. butterflies yeah. and the animals and all of that. So, but I couldn't get enough to make any for my, uh, to do my drink today, but that is our drink of the month mm -hmm. that we thought. We I was would. able to make a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, brought in some dandelions. I had picked a couple and then we decided that we were going to be like, um, trying out this drink and all of that before mm -hmm. our newsletter came out and all of that. And mm -hmm. I picked a couple and I was like, okay, let me try. My dog ate some. <laughs> <laughs> I, was oh, like, honey. I was like here smell it you know and she she literally put them in her mouth <laughs> <laughs> she'll eat anything but um yes it's it's very good like I do love a good dandelion it's delicate yeah yeah it has like if you love lavender like anything lavender flavored then you'll like dandelion I would think yeah I, it's really cool because when I was you know, I was like, dandelion syrup, I, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what else can you do with dandelions? And you can make dandelion jello there and a jelly. And I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely, I'm so, so excited about lavender. I got some lavender when we went, we went with you guys. Yes, we went. Oh, I don't plants. know that we told them no, that. No, we, we haven't. Went shopping for plants <laughs> together. I actually took pictures that I need to post. Yes. But um, yeah, we went plant shopping. I got some herbs. I'm going to make my witch garden, which we'll talk about that next week because next week is our garden magic uh, episode. So we'll talk about that next week, but we had a blast. Uh, yes, we did. And I'm, I'm somehow our, already uh, killing my lavender. Like it's already half oh, dead and I don't know why I'm not doing uh, anything. <laughs> our husbands would turn around and we'd be gone. And they're like, yep. Oh God, where are our wives? And I came back with a, uh, uh, a pot that I didn't need that's in the shape of a VW uh, wagon or van. <laughs> a van. It is adorable. It is so rent. I so, love it so, so much. I'm going to put and my I came, lavender in it when I have soil. I don't have soil I, yet. I came back with a lime tree. <laughs> yeah, you did. I almost came back with a lemon tree. I almost my did, but then like, I was like, we don't have space. <laughs> limes don't grow well here. And I'm like, well, we're going to put it on our deck and we're going to try it. And he's like, okay, our husbands are so good. They're very understanding. Uh, but that'll they? be a topic for next week when we talk about yes, garden magic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay sorry. We haven't even started so, the topic. I know. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so in the hustle and bustle of modern life amidst the chaos of this external Which world. Which we've already talked about mine very well. <laughs> right. There exists a sanctuary of magic and healing. Your home, your hearth, your kitchen. So it's far more than just a physical fireplace. You know, you think of the hearth. Oh, that's a mm -hmm. fireplace. It's more than that. The hearth represents the heart of your home, a sacred space where ancient traditions and modern practices can intertwine together to create this haven of warmth and nourishment and spiritual connection. So the kitchen is used to be where the hearth was back in the day. Mm -hmm. That was the central area. You did the cooking. And so kitchen witchery and hearth witchery are very similar. So I'm going to kind of talk about both mm -hmm. of those. It makes me feel warm inside. It does. It makes it me really feel does. like I'm Cozy. supposed to be, you know, and I know this sounds so sexist uh, coming from a woman, woman, <laughs> but I'm, I'm supposed to be in the kitchen. No, that's not what I meant. But I know, I'm, but it, but I understand. Yeah. I understand. And it yeah. doesn't have to be a woman. A man, I think, feels that way too. Yeah. There's but coming from a comfort, me, I'm like, I feel like I should be in the kitchen. I'm like, oh God, how many dinner? Like, yeah, that's, I'm, that sounds no, no, no. Wrong. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, first of all, what is hearth magic? So, for centuries, of course, the hearth has held a central place in human culture and spirituality. It served as the focal point of the home, providing not just food, but warmth and light and sustenance to those who gathered around it. 
But beyond its practical functions, it was also regarded as a sacred altar, a gateway to the divine, and a source of protection and healing. Mm-hmm. Hearth magic encup- encompasses a wide range of practices from doing daily rituals to elaborate ceremonies that are steeped in tradition and ceremonies. It is more than just casting spells or performing rituals, though. It's about cultivating a deep sense of reverence and connection to the sacred space that we call home. And to me, this is you. Yeah. Hearth magic and kitchen magic is 100% Ren. I you yeah love, I mean, whenever, okay, I was thinking about this for some reason, I guess because I knew we were going to be doing this topic. Mm-hmm. I... If you think of like this warmth and this is what I want to embody. (laughs) Okay. This is what I think I embody. Now, my husband might say different because he eats my food all the time. So (laughs) it might be different. And I mean, recently my food hasn't been so great because I haven't had enough time. It's just been quick and blah. And I I haven't been enjoying myself in the kitchen lately Mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And when I think of me cooking and a really good meal, I think of the, like an old grandma. Yeah, for sure. Home style cooking, everything homemade, Mm -hmm. even like the bread, cornbread, like everything is homemade. Like you, you grind your own mill, like whatever, like it's called, like whatever, what is the term? Meal, I think. Meal, meal. So you grind, you, yeah, you have this machine where you grind your own meal, you make everything from scratch. That is what uh, show I your own butter, which you do. I do. And that is what I want to embody. I want I want my food to have that warm, comfort, fulfilling feeling. And it's just warm and cozy and like low glow your, lights. <laughs> you're infusing your love into it. Yeah. You know, and it is your home. You know, I and don't know. we can find healing and solace and empowerment with all that shit that's going on out out there like you're talking about you know Mm -hmm. you go out to work and this is a brand new thing for you you know because you were so in school for so long and you had you still were able to be at home a lot because I was because I was I was on my own schedule and I don't like studying with people and oh yeah COVID COVID COVID. we all became homebodies homebodies and with all the cooking that I did I gained a lot of weight (laughs) Oh, yeah, for sure. I ate a lot of good food during COVID. I mean, bread is one of the bread with homemade butter. Oh, my gosh. I love my bread in the world. Now, that is the only thing that I will say is as a, huh? You'll gain a ton of weight when you do that. It's so good, though. My bread machine is the only thing really that I, I enjoy that's not like the old timey style of making bread. Like, I would, I I still think that it's your cauldron. I still, struggle with making homemade bread because I'm gluten-free. Oh, I haven't yeah. like I could probably make a really good sourdough if everything cooperated as it should with like using actual flour and mm, those mm. ingredients, but I haven't been able to do anything old like I say old style, but like homemade, like you knead the dough yourself, you let it rise and all of that. I haven't been able to do that since being gluten-free because of all the doughs. They say that they're a one-on-one ratio. It acts just like flour, et cetera, but it doesn't. But it doesn't. Oh. And I would love to be one of those old ladies <laughs> that has those, <laughs> you know, rags, like like checkered patterned rags that you cover yep. your stuff with. I love yep. that. Like that's my aesthetic right that there. That is your aesthetic. And I just can't do that because it doesn't rise properly or I haven't found the right mixtures to be able to make a good bread. Mm -hmm. But since right now I'm doing like a low carb type of diet anyways, I haven't been able to make those homey meals that I've been wanting and craving and have that You're making my mouth water. I know. (laughs) I know. I want a good like meaty potato stew. Like I am, I need it. (laughs) You know how we think of the hearth as being a fireplace. And did you know that the first fireplace with a built-in grill was actually designed by Benjamin Franklin in 1744? Mm, I've mixed feelings about that. He he was into everything. That that man. I mean, I feel like you've had to, they've had to, I guess a built-in grill, define built-in grill. Because yeah, we've had true. like I mean, cauldrons hanging in our fireplaces for centuries before 1744. Like, like we've had that. Yeah, I think it was, it's actually like the grill that you can actually 
put in and cook hamburgers on and pizzas and then, on and okay. all of that. Like mm -hmm. a, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was a wood stove because it said fireplace, not, not wood stove. Anyway. Yeah. I thought that was interesting that he's yeah. credited with that, whether Intr it's true or not. I interesting. don't know. Interesting. I, uh, I have mixed feelings about Benjamin mm -hmm. Franklin. <laughs> well, in any people back then, mm -hmm. they were, they had different thought processes than we do. Yeah. So the hearth witch combines the energies of the green witch with the kitchen witch guided by the magic of the home. Mm -hmm. So the hearth witch's practice is part herbalism, it's part energy healing, it's part counseling, it's part nature mysticism. You know, it's got all of those things, which to me, that just says, you know, in the dictionary, Wren is the one that is... <laughs> That, that's right there in the dictionary. My face needs to be on the front yes. of all of these books and all of these topics everywhere. For sure. <laughs> Hearth witches usually tuned into the four elements and observed nature cycles, rhythms, and pauses closely. So what then is a kitchen witch? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So a kitchen witch, witchcraft, kitchen witchcraft is actually rooted in the belief that the kitchen is a sacred space imbued with the energy of creation and nourishment, which of course it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For centuries, wise women and healers have worked their magic in the in the hearth, which usually that's where the, the, the hearth was in the kitchen, mm -hmm. harnessing the natural power of herbs, spices, and other culinary ingredients to promote healing, protection, and spiritual growth. Now, I will say, when my husband and I move out, I would mm -hmm. love to be able to design my own home where, like, we hire a designer, I try to do it myself, whatever, mm -hmm. and I want a large, and I mean large, fireplace. In the kitchen or in the, in kitchen. the living room? In the in kitchen. In the kitchen. To be able to cook on it. Like I want to be able to have open fires to cook on it, cauldron style, everything. That would be so cool. It makes me think of the, um, what is that restaurant um, that has the huge fireplaces, the uh, the country restaurant. Cracker I'm barrel. drawing a blank. I like our 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 silence. <laughs> <laughs> Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Oh, oh. Cracker when you go barrel. in, they have this huge fireplace, and it still has the swinging. Oh, um, I haven't been mechanism. to one in a long time, but I do know what you're talking about. It, it, I would love to have one of those. I that would. You could swing the cauldron. Mm -hmm. onto That's exactly the fire. what I want. And could you imagine little? little tiny knees and my husband running around going mom cook, cook something in the <laughs> fireplace and i'd be like okay you don't have to ask okay. me twice <laughs> yeah that would be cool Aww. kitchen witches cook with intent spreading their magic to others through food and drink a kitchen witch is someone who uses the energy of food and cooking to create their magic and one of the most enchanting aspects of kitchen witchcraft is is its accessibility. I mean, everybody can do it. You don't mm -hmm. need elaborate rituals or expensive tools to practice magic in the kitchen. Now, you do say, okay, I'm off topic so much. So much I'm so sorry. <laughs> but when you say anybody can do it, I'm like, yeah, anybody can cook, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a show, I can't remember the show's name right now, that's out that's literally proves me wrong that no that not everyone no, can there are cook. people who can't cook no like some people <laughs> kitchen disasters now, or something everyone can cook if you like obviously you just need to learn right mm -hmm. everything is a learned ability you don't just know it automatically mm -hmm. but this one it was like a, a snippet of the video and it was like this they were like it's a show so they have contestants and they're like make this dish so everyone got a different dish that they had to try to replicate etc mm -hmm. one guy got orange chicken Okay. Cooks the, he's like cooking the chicken. He goes, what makes orange chicken orange? He put food dye in it. Oh God. And he didn't even cook the chicken. Like, I don't even know how he cooked it, but it wasn't even on, like it wasn't in a pan. Like he, the only way he could try to think to cook it was in like this weird slitted thing that was like leaking everywhere. I was like, okay, maybe not everyone can cook. You got to learn. <laughs> and I mean- Oh my I mean, gosh. I think it, it was depends. just chaos. It does depend. Everyone not, can cook. You not just everybody is is brought up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the responsibility of every parent, whether you have 
boy boys or girls, every parent mm -hmm. should teach their kid to cook. Oh, They've man. got to be able to go out on their own and survive and cook. Yeah. One thing that I was taught young <laughs> mm -hmm. from my grandma, okay, on my dad's side, she was this born and raised in the South mm -hmm. country grandma. She cooked okay. everything in lard. Oh, man. Delicious. Oh, yeah. But uh, so delicious. unhealthy. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. the one thing that I first learned how to cook, well, not really. I, you don't cook it, was hot chocolate. With lard? No, not with lard. Oh, okay. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but she, I was like, grandma, or I call her granny. I was like, granny, I really, really want something sweet. And she goes over to her cute little kitchen. I, now, it is outdated and old. I would say mm -hmm. that. But it's mm -hmm. a cute little kitchen. Now. I would love it. I love things like that. She opened her old little fridge. She pulled out the milk. And she pulled out Hershey's chocolate syrup. <laughs> Was oh, it? Yeah, it was Hershey's chocolate syrup. And she goes, here. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with it? And she's like, I'm going to get you a pot and I'm going to start the the eye for you and you're going to mix it yourself. And that was like the spark to everything that I've ever wanted to do <laughs> in the kitchen. And hot chocolate hot is in chocolate. your heart. She, she, even though it was just so simple, it was just milk and literally Hershey's syrup or whatever off brand it was or whatever it was. And I got to is, mix it together is that, and heat it what, up myself. What, what food is your most comfort food ever? It sounds weird, but my most comfort food is Brunswick stew. Oh, wow. In a pumpkin. <laughs> Interesting. Now growing up, um, my mom loved to do a lot of things like for Halloween, like how you do and how I mm -hmm. do. And I learned mm -hmm. a lot from my mom and I learned a lot from you since knowing you and having yeah. all these recipes. My mm -hmm. mom would take um, her homemade, it's homemade Brunswick stew. So, Yum. or sometimes the canned, because the canned stuff also makes me happy. Because I, I like the canned I stuff. I love the honestly. canned stuff. And she <laughs> would hollow out a little cooking pumpkin. And put the stew in it. And I have been doing that for a very long time. I know you've done it because it's not like I it's have. Not, not something like gatekeep or anything. Like right, right, everybody. Right. But that to me, when I think of comfort food, I think of that or I think of like a hearty stew, like a good stew. Like I don't know how else to. I think for me, it's macaroni and cheese. Oh. And I don't know why, although I must say, I remember growing up, the smell of Thanksgiving, the smell of the turkey in the oven, that smells like home and hearth to me. Mm -hmm. That does, that does have a good, a good stuffing mm -hmm. from Thanksgiving oh, makes yeah. me feel like, like at mm. home. And it's just something so fulfilling and warm and it, it is brought about good times. Like you're with family For or sure. Thanksgiving family, and all of that. Yeah. 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 Oh man, I love well, food. <laughs> I know. And this, this is the perfect episode for that yes. for sure. <laughs> so the differences between hearth and kitchen, there are some differences. Kitchen witchcraft and hearth witchcraft are both forms of witchcraft that focus on domestic activities, but there are some differences. Mm -hmm. And actually, I have to say, did you know this freaked me out when I saw this? <laughs> Sears catalog. I don't know if you ever you might be too young to have ever I seen think I know a what you're talking about <laughs> catalog uh -huh. they used to sell actual houses I know what you're talking about <laughs> in their catalog uh -huh. between 1908 and 1940 they had uh their their Sears modern homes took do it yourself to this whole new level uh -huh. they sold 75,000 home kits and hundreds of different styles, and some of them are still in existence. Yeah, I some of them are no still being idea. lived in today. I saw That's that. Crazy. I saw that because I love the old vintage things. Like I love it so much. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Can I buy a home still? Like, can I still buy this kit?" I have looked. You can't. Um, but I wish. Yeah. I wish I could. Well, I mean, they've got tiny homes these days where you can I guess actually. That's true. You know. But I'm already in a tiny design. home. I don't yeah. want a tiny home. I want I want, I want one of these big, big Sears home. homes. Well, and they were don't they decent have, sized homes too. Yeah, don't they have modular homes these days that, that yeah, you can have ordered? But they're also know. still expensive. Yeah, that's true. Everything's expensive. <laughs> okay. So kitchen witchcraft, the Anyways. focus <laughs> is 
primarily on culinary arts and cooking as mm -hmm. your magical practice. The magic in the kitchen, you, uh, as a practitioner of kitchen witchcraft, you often see the kitchen as the sacred space of your, your home. Mm -hmm. That's where you work your magic. That's where you do the food preparation. That's where you cook. That's where you brew. Mm -hmm. Herbalism in kitchen magic. You know, kitchen witches frequently incorporate herbs and spices and other food ingredients into their magical practice, using them in spells, potions, and rituals, which often has to do with the food that they're cooking. Mm -hmm. Cooking with intention and mindfulness is the key aspect of kitchen witchcraft. And they, you know, you always hear the term, oh, it was made with love. That's a real thing. Mm -hmm. That is kitchen magic. That or is hate. it. Whenever, yeah, I'm you, you <laughs> yeah, that's a random thing too. Yeah, um, some witches actually use cooking utensils and kitchen tools for divination, interpreting patterns and signs and food preparations. Well, you like know, I when, never thought about that. When a soup is boiling, you can try to scry and see what it's mm. trying to tell you as you are cooking that. I thought soup. you were talking more about like. Uh, a fork is your wand type of thing. Well, that that <laughs> I mean, it could be. Too. It definitely is one for sure. I bet you everyone, and I mean everyone. If if you're a cooker, if you cook, or if you don't, everyone has a favorite utensil that they use in their kitchen. I bet to so. mix their and stuff a, and, and a, a favorite, favorite spoon. knife and a favorite I, knife. I only like the little spoons. I don't like the big spoons. I only like the big spoons. That's so funny. You're just weird. If I eat anything like cereal, soup, stew, it's, gotta it's a be little the, spoon. No, nope. it's got to be the big spoon. Nope, little spoon. My all husband the way. thinks I'm weird too. He likes the little spoons, and you know, he'll hand me a little spoon, and I'm like, no, mm -mm. <laughs> no, 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 nope. no. I need the little spoon. So the focus of hearth witchcraft is the actual hearth or fireplace itself being mm -hmm. the center of the home and family. Um, it encompasses broader domestic activities than just cooking. Oh, and did you know when it comes to houses, the creaking and groaning that you hear aren't necessarily signs of old age or, or ghosts. They it <laughs> might just be caused by the fluctuating humidity and temperature in the house. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I, mm -hmm. I think I would rather it be ghosts. But anyway, oh, that's a whole, that's a whole different I'd rather topic. rather not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hearth witches emphasize the holistic well-being of the home and family, incorporating practices that uh, are related to nurturing, protection, mm -hmm. and spiritual connection. Hearth witches also incorporate ancestral veneration and mm -hmm. household ri rituals into their practice. Um, a lot of times it's a generational practice, which I must say kitchen witchery is too generational. Yeah. Like you were talking yeah, about your granny passing mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. her, her recipes that yeah. that's, a yeah. And I need to get more recipes from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, hearth witches may work magic throughout the house, not just the kitchen. They want to create their whole home as being sacred spaces. You could have altars in various rooms. You could have different um, feelings and vibes in different rooms. Whereas if that's, the not kitchen, if which, that's not me, then. It is. That's why I'm saying <laughs> you're not just a kitchen witch. It's your whole home mm -hmm. that, that you, you, it's not just your kitchen. It's your whole home that you yeah. put that, that intent into. Mm -hmm. Uh, celebrating seasonal and hearth-based festivals such as solstices, equinoxes, and other significant dates is is very common for the hearth witch. Mm -hmm. Both the kitchen witch and the hearth witch revolve, it all involve, revolves around home and domestic activities, but the kitchen witch primarily focuses on food magic, while the hearth witch talks about or works with a whole range of household and familiar practices. Uh, not It might be centered around the hearth, which could be in the kitchen, or it might be in your living room. Mm -hmm. um, but they're more about the whole home as a sanctuary, as whereas the kitchen, which is more about the kitchen as a sanctuary. Yeah. And did you know, this is the weirdest thing. The smallest house in the world is called the one SQM house. It's one square meter. It's designed by a Berlin-based architect. 
and it measures exactly one square meter. And you can flip it to change the function of the space. So you flip it one way and it's a resting space. You flip it another way and it's got a place to eat. You flip it a different way and you can sit and work. And the whole house is made up of wooden frames that is easy to carry and transport. I that just sounds up. crazy to me. Yeah. The one SQM house. Look that up. I... But it can be oh. easily assembled and it's apparently livable. I just can't imagine. But there's no bathroom. Right. There's no, bathroom. no shower. Mm -hmm. There's no kitchen. Well, it does. It did say there was a place to eat. I guess you can't cook. But where do you, I guess you're ordering yeah. out every day. I guess so. Or eating like. And you're having to set the house up near a bathroom. Granola bars or something. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's literally just a box. It, it is. It's crazy. But the what was interesting to me was that you can flip it. It's modular, basically. So you on one, you know, there's a bed when you flip it one way. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're ready to go to sleep. So there's the bed. A one square yeah. meter bed, though. How comfortable would that be? Yeah. If you have a partner, like you guys would literally be like oh, yeah. squishing each other. Yeah. No. no. And the walls but, are see-through. I guess those are changeable, too. But yeah, just crazy. I never knew there was such a thing. Mm. Interesting. So... The tools of the home witch. So we've talked about the tools of the kitchen as being tools for the kitchen witch, like pots and pans are our cauldrons, glasses are our chalices, spoons could be our wands. Mm -hmm. The crock pot, I think we've talked about the crock pot being a cauldron. A cauldron, and yeah. Maybe your bread maker being a cauldron. Mm -hmm. The microwave, I'm wondering, can the microwave um, be a cauldron? I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Did you know that the microwave was invented by accident? What? <laughs> yeah. It was invented in 1945 by this engineer, um, Percy Spencer. Mm -hmm. And he was working on a radar system. And while he was working on it, he had a candy bar in his pocket and it melted. And he was like, what? And so he's like, he started experimenting with different foods and found out that microwaves could be used to cook food. And that was how the microwave became interesting. An Isn't that crazy? That's pretty cool. It is cool. The altar, a hearth and kitchen, witch may have an altar set up in their home, typically near the hearth or fireplace or in the kitchen. It could be in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the hearth, which encompasses more than the kitchen, so it might be the living room where the family gathers, you know, <laughs> maybe where you have your Sabbaths is mm -hmm. in the living room in front of that fireplace. Um, the altar space will serve as a sacred space for ritual work. It might be adorned with candles, um, crystals, herbs, other symbolic items. You might have a broom. If you're a kitchen or hearth witch, also known as a besom, it is mm -hmm. a traditional tool often associated with hearth, hearth witchcraft. It's used for sweeping away negative energies, for purifying spaces, for marking boundaries and which ritual circles, ritual circles. We always do the ritual. ritual. But it is a tool most associated with the hearth witch rather than the kitchen witch, but it can be used for both. Mm -hmm. The hearth witch might use the besom in all of the rooms of the home, ridding the entire house of bad energy, whereas the kitchen witch's focus is usually in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing the wrong with putting a besom on your wall in the kitchen. <laughs> Absolutely not. And, and I love your idea of having a, a, a hearth in the kitchen. You, modern, modern homes don't normally no, have that. No. It's been <clears throat> done away with, but I would love it. Yeah, my husband and I just, we look at homes Mm -hmm. on Zillow every now and then. And I found a house that it was an old house and it did have a, a fireplace in the kitchen. And I thought, how cool is that? But it's it. not <laughs> something that they build nowadays. No. It was an old home. Mm -hmm. um, herbs play a central role in both herb, I mean, in both herb and both hearth and kitchen witchery. <laughs> a hearth witch might cultivate an herb garden of magical herbs, keep a collection of dried herbs to use in spells, potions, and rituals, mm -hmm. whereas a kitchen witch tends to use those herbs in their cooking or in their cleaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been wanting to mm -hmm. make my own um, cleaning spray 
Mm-hmm. With like water, vinegar, and then like whatever scent you Some want based herbs, on yeah, yeah, whatever herbs yeah. or essential oils that you get from your herbs. I'm very excited to to grow my herbs this year. Mm-hmm. I, I want to do a lot of a lot of work this year mm-hmm. with my herbs. Candles. Candles are used in hearth witchcraft for lighting the hearth, creating a cozy atmosphere. I do love candles around my living room. It does. It creates this magical, cozy atmosphere. Um, you can also use candles if you're a hearth witch for your meditation. Oh, yeah. K- kitchen witches might use candles to create an app, an atmosphere in the kitchen, whereas the hearth witch actually puts candles in different rooms. And then, of course, different colored candles represent different mm-hmm. intentions and goals. I really like the look of the white slash like tannish, you know, Candles, candles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna put candles like that, or tower candles that are like next to I each other like or anything, I love those. White is very crisp and clean looking mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't want all the way white. I want like a little bit of tannish beige. I like the white. <laughs> I like the stark white. Mm-hmm. Um, a hearth witch. Oh, crystals, crystals and gemstones. A hearth witch might use crystals for their metaphysical properties. They might use them for healing energies as pertains to all the aspects of their home. They might want crystals in their bathroom to create a calm atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Um, They want it to be a sacred and safe place. A kitchen witch might use crystals to intensify the magic of their cooking or to create a vibe in the kitchen that aids in their cooking or their culinary spells. Divination tools. Hearth witches may use various divination tools, such as tarot cards. We all love our tarot cards. Yes. Runes, pendulums, and scrying mirrors to gain insight. Whereas the kitchen witch, their focus on divination tends tends to be within the realm of his or her cooking and recipes. So like you use the kitchen utensils as divinatory tools to gain insight and guidance. You know, stir your soup clockwise to attract oh, yeah. positive energy mm-hmm. toss in a handful of herbs into the air to and interpret their patterns as messages from the universe i thought you were gonna say hands just like a hand like meat hand or something oh god <laughs> <laughs> ancestral uh items both hearth and kitchen witches often honor their ancestors and family tradition in their practice a kitchen witch might honor their ancestors by using cooking recipes of their family you know that's passed yeah. down yeah um keeping those recipes in a book of shadows is perfect Ooh, for that yeah so yeah it might not be that we've had witches in our in our past but those those recipes have been passed down and we can imbue them with our intent and mm-hmm. so we can start keeping our recipe book book of shadows journal how wherever mm-hmm. you want to put it mm-hmm. in mine's a little old lady journal <laughs> That's so funny. Did you know the <laughs> oldest cookbook dates back to 1700 BC? Oh, wow. BC. The first recorded cookbook was written in cuneiform on tablets in ancient Babylon. It contained recipes for meats, stews, poultry, and vegetarian dishes. I need to get my hands on some of those recipes. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing? That yeah. is fascinating. That is just fascinating to me. A hearth witch might keep photographs, heirlooms, or other ancestral items on their hearth altar as a way of connecting with their lineage. Incense and smudge sticks. So burning incense or smudge sticks is very common in the hearth witchcraft. It's for cleansing and purifying spaces. Of course, they want to keep their entire home um, clarified and purified. Yeah. But as to scent for the kitchen witch... There is nothing better than the smell of food cooking. So, you know, think it of that smell so of good. the like, fresh mm. baked bread or mm. the turkey on Thanksgiving Day or, or chocolate chip or, cookies. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say cookies. <laughs> cookies. I love cookies. Oh, my gosh. A good chocolate mm. chip cookie sounds so good right now. <laughs> I know, right? I love the uh, baking. My mouth I love is watering. Baking sweets. The sweets. I love baking. Like before, I didn't used to. I was not a good baker. Like I'm at not all. A good baker. Like my cookies would come out cakey and my brownies would be flat, 
you know, Uh huh. type Mm of -hmm. thing. I've really worked on it and I can make these beautiful, like there's something I really want to make recently. Um, what is it? It's like a, not banana bread. Cause it's like, I make a good banana bread too, with like chocolate chips, Mm. and but I've been wanting to make like a spring type of sweet cake where it's like a lemon cake, but with like raspberries and strawberries, jam- like and you can do this in. gluten free. Yeah, I'm really good at baking sweet oh, wow. gluten free. I can't master bread, but I can master any baked good sweet. <laughs> You'll have to bring some. I'm having a, a Kentucky Derby party, Woo! and Ren, Ren and her husband are coming. I'm, I'm so excited. excited. You there's should a, bring some a of dress your code and everything. Yeah, I know we're going to wear fascinators, and our guys are going to wear bow ties, and we're having Maybe. other couples coming over. <laughs> he is going to wear a bow tie. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I my husband's so. in the same boat with him. We got to keep them separated because otherwise they'll convince be like, each other yeah, I'm going to take it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, back on track. Uh, so how do you practice home magic? And I'm going to lump both hearth and kitchen together. So you cook with intention. You infuse your meals with love, gratitude, blessings by cooking with intention You visualize your culinary creations as sacred offerings, um, embed the nourishing energy of the earth, the healing power of your own intentions. There's so much that you can do Mm -hmm. when you're cooking that intent is there. And Mm -hmm. especially like in the middle of the summer when your harvest is coming in and you're cooking with the, the vegetables that you've planted with your own hands, you know, that's just, there's a lot of intent there. Mm-hmm. Herbal magic. Explore the magical properties of herbs and botanicals by incorporating them into your hearth rituals and spells. Brew your own magical and um, herbal herbal teas. I wonder if Greg does this. Oh, I know so he is a green witch for sure. So I wonder, does he make his own herbal teas? Does do, you know you can create sh- mm-hmm. sachets or charms or burn the dried herbs and offerings as uh, offerings to the spirits or to the fae or whatever it is. Um, ancestral veneration, of course, honor the wisdom and guidance of your ancestors by oh, creating yeah. an ancestral altar or shrine, offerings of food that you've made yourself, um, offer drink or symbolic items. You Uh, You can place these on the altar as tokens of reverence and remembrance. It would be cool if it were an ancestor that the recipe was from. Like, let's say. How cool would that be? I have cornbread on my mind for some reason. Cornbread sounds so good right now. Mm. So if you made, like, let's say it was like a great grandparents recipe of cornbread that was been passed down and you made it, then you could offer that same recipe that's so cool because yeah. my dad's side, which I think there is a lot of witchcraft on that side, even though they didn't acknowledge it, I, mm-hmm. he was a witch, hundred percent. But he's German, and so I would love to get some of those German recipes passed down mm-hmm. from that side of the family. Oh, that would be lovely mm-hmm. to to make that and honor my ancestors oh, on yeah. that side with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, rituals of renewal. The changing seasons are very important for a home witch. We we do want to take the opportunity to a- acknowledge the change, acknowledge the seasons as they go, mm-hmm. the renewal, the transformation yeah. that must, we all have to transform even though we don't want to. Um, you know, so light candles and burn incense and offer prayers of gratitude as you celebrate the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. Mm-hmm. Anything you can think of to make your home or hearth and kitchen a spiritual and energized place is is a perfect thing. A lot of times this is very subjective. It is what's important to you. Oh, yeah. I did want to talk about some deities that are associated with home, hearth and kitchen, because a lot of people, a lot of witches out there do work with deities. So if you are or want to be a kitchen or hearth witch, here are some deities to consider. You have Hestia or Vesta. Uh, it, she's in Greek mythology. She's Hestia in, in Roman mythology. And I say mythology, it just whatever you believe, she was Vesta. And they she is the goddess of home, hearth, and family. And she is revered as a protector of the sacred flame and presides over domestic rituals, hospitality, and community. 
So that would be a great deity to work with as mm-hmm. a kitchen or hearth witch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bridget. Bridget is the Celtic goddess associated with hearth, poetry, healing, and craftsmanship. We've talked about her before. She is honored during the Festival of Imbolc, which I think is where we talked about her Mm -hmm. in our Imbolc episode, uh, which marks the beginning of spring and the return of the light. You have Frigg, or Frigga, who is the Norse goddess of home, marriage, and motherhood. She is the wife of Odin and is revered as a protective and nurturing figure who watches over her family and household. You have Hera, Hera, Jesus, Hera (laughs) slash Juno. She's Hera in Greek mythology, Juno in the Roman history. She is the queen or goddess that presides over marriage, childbirth, and the domestic sphere. She is often invoked for blessings of fertility, fidelity, and harmony harmony, har- harmony. harmony in the home. Um, Demeter. Demeter is a Greek goddess uh, associated with agriculture, fertility, and harvest. She is revered as a nurturing and maternal figure who blesses the land with abundance and sustains the household with food and nourishment. Remember, she is the mother of Persephone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember talking about her. And then Anu or Danu in Irish mythology, she is Anu. In Celtic mythology, she is Danu. She is the mother associated with the land, fertility, and abundance. She is honored for her role in providing for the needs of the household and ensuring the prosperity of the community. And Weren't you, you were telling me about some goddess that was, we were talking about this the other day about a goddess that was a home with a home goddess, but I can't remember if it, it's one that I talked about or not. I, I was talking about Frigga, but there okay. was another one and I can't, I can't remember right now. <laughs> I, if I, I had it written down, then I'd be able to remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. I know we, we talk about these topics, not yes, just we on do. our podcast. <laughs> yeah. We talk all the time all the about time. witchcraft, but you know, basically in a world that feels chaotic and disconnected, con- blah, 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 disconnected, um, kitchen and hearth witchcraft offers a powerful antidote to that. It is a reminder that magic is not just the stuff of fairy tales and fa- fantasies, but it's a tangible force that we can deal with every day in our lives. I mean, we're in the kitchen every day. Mm-hmm. We are in our home every day. Yeah. And this is something that we can bring into our lives to make our home a safe, sacred place. Mm-hmm. So the next time you step into your home and kitchen, take a minute to breathe deeply, ground yourself in that present moment and say, oh, I'm home. You know, you've been out at work all day long. You're hungry, whatever. You step in and you're mm-hmm. like, I'm home. Embrace the magic that surrounds you in your home. I mean, that's all I've got. Um, Yeah. Thanks for listening. This episode has me really excited to get back into the kitchen again. I cannot wait for the garden harvest and cooking with intention. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I know Ren is going to be posting a whole bunch of wonderful recipes this summer (laughs) on our Patreon. So if you're interested in all of that, Mm -hmm. um, I do have a couple lined up that I have in mind that I've been working on and maybe I'll do some of my lemon squares. My lemon squares are really good. Her lemon recipes in general are really good. You need to post Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of those this summer. Lemon squares. And then I want to experiment with like that, like little lemon cake that I was telling you about. If you mix Mm -hmm. berries in with it, but then they're also like homemade, like not homemade berries, obviously, but like homemade, like a jam mixture type of thing. I made Mm. a homemade cherry jam and then made cherry bread out of it. Like oh, gluten that sounds lovely. And I really wish that I had the, you know, the ratios down because it would have been perfect. Oh, yeah. Right. Right now I'm on keto trying to lose some weight and, mm-hmm. you know, they, they do have good keto sugars. So a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. yeah, they do mm-hmm. that you can, you, that all of these recipes that call for sugar, I can make keto. They can be adjusted. Using, yeah. Yes. Which mm-hmm. is wonderful. And I'm glad that you can do that with gluten free too. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll be posting recipes and <laughs> yes, you know. So if you want to get those, support us on Patreon. That mm-hmm. would be awesome. You want to do the outro? Yeah, if I can remember it. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Now with all of my tangents and what's been going on in my life, <laughs> if you want to hear more, you can go to www.c3witchypodcast.com. There we have links to all of our social media, all of our episodes, our newsletter, our merch. Everything is there. Oh, and speaking of merch, we're working on our merch. Working. It's about to come out. <sighs> Hopefully. <laughs> it, it, should. it won't be out when this comes out, but it might be. Maybe soon. Like, It'll like be within, very a, soon. within a couple of days of this episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm the one who's holding us back. I have to do a few more tweaks, but I want to make sure that the designs are good and you guys are wanting to actually mm -hmm. buy them, you know, not just mm -hmm. put something out there just to have it out there. I want to actually make it good for you guys. Um, so... I'm excited about doing all the designs. We hope you enjoy them all. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Just go to our website. And I guess our merch does have an exclusive URL. So if you go to www.c3witchypodcastmerch.com, that's where you'll find our merch when we have it posted. <laughs> and and these are limited editions. So yes, they are. They're, they, they're only out for this specific time frame. And this will be the summer. I think we go through the August... Um, we, we go through Lamas, Lamas and Letha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Letha and Lamas, we didn't, we aren't able to get out anything in time for Beltane because mm -hmm. by the time we got them out, Beltane would be here already. Yeah. Um, so, but, but Letha and Lamas and a regular, a regular shirt or shirt, a regular Re design. Like witchy design. Mm -hmm. And then an after dark design. Yeah. Woo. Well, <laughs> woo, yay. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. And until then, stay witchy. Woo.